Greetings, this is Professor Zhu speaking. You are going to have a lesson on how to paint a lotus. Before we uh, start to uh, give you lessons on how to paint the leaves, the flowers, and the composition, and even uh, adding a dragonfly or a bird, we have to talk about a uh, little bit about the uh, lotus. This is one of my recent painting showing a kingfisher at the very top. And uh, you see a young flower uh, just next to it. And now we begin to see uh, leaves. Surely I'm going to show you uh, all different kind of positions of uh, leaves. And here you can see a very wide, wide open uh, flower. And uh, if we keep moving, to see the lower part, you may see a young leaf. And here's the writing showing the year and the time I painted this. I'm going to give you a drawing showing what really the real lotus look like. First, I will show you the, the roots. The roots usually as big as a human arm. Uh, surely you cannot see. Now here, this one got only uh, four sections. And uh, this is the uh, small ones to take uh, uh, Then here, actually this is the mud. Uh, the, the roads actually enter very deeply here. And when the young things coming out is this way. And this is a young leaf. And, and this is a slightly bigger leaf. It opens like that. So uh, one leaf, one stem, they all come from the joint of uh, this part of the roads. The roots are actually grows uh, continuously and uh, almost uh, cover the whole uh, bottom of the pond or the riverside. And uh, surely the water usually will be uh, this high. And now uh, I will show you if it's a, a big leaf and here is the center and goes down and here a big leaf and the leaves most of the case we are not going to paint this way because it's a very much uh, uh, the oriental uh, philosopher's idea said we are not bigger than the flower so we have to show us uh, uh, we are smaller than the uh, plants, or we are actually standing in the uh, pond. And uh, some sure it could be um, a month ago, now they become uh, uh, broken, turned. But uh, one leaf, one stem, come down like this. Now come to the flower. Uh, this is the young one, the young bud, not open yet. Sometimes we may see uh, one or two. But when it full grown, usually we will see quite a lot of petals. And uh, this is a uh, full grown, but it's still a side view, meaning we are standing in the water and uh, almost same height or slightly higher than the flower itself. And when the flower faded away, uh, surely it grows uh, in the uh, late spring, beginning to have young leaves, and then later, the summertime, everything becomes so big and uh, the leaves could cover the whole river or whole pond. And uh, when uh, early fall, the petals are coming down, then we will see uh, a seed, seeds pot. 
a box with money. Uh, actually, the seeds are buried deep there, and still many times we still have uh, a chance to see few uh, stamens uh, before it was inside, and this one. That means before this was a flower, now the petals uh, disappeared. Uh, sometimes you may see one or two petals uh, connected to that. And uh, this is what we're going to see. Uh, it's important to understand uh, one leaf, one stem, one flower, one stem. And also it's very interesting, you have to understand they all uh, come from the mud, through the water, and uh, generally speaking, uh, as high as the uh, uh, human body. And the leaf, the size, small one, like a small umbrella, large one, almost like a round table, sometimes very huge. The flower also in the size, generally speaking, like a baby's head. It is a very much uh, uh, a wonderful thing to look at a flower. And uh, the Neo-Confucianists of the Song Dynasty, uh, Zhou Tun Yi, wrote an article about uh, his so much uh, loving, uh, uh, he loves the lotus flower, and uh, talking about uh, uh, a beautiful uh, flower, so pure, so clean, and with nice fragrance, but it comes out of a very dirty, ugly looking, dark, uh, mud place. And this is his idea of a gentleman. And so we have to keep this in mind when you're learning painting, lotus painting. You have to understand all this. And uh, after this, I'm going to show you how to make leaves from young to old and even uh, dry dead ones. Then after that, I will show you flowers. And the lastly, I will show you the seed pot and uh, some decorative things like the birds, like a dragon fry. This is the all lesson. The uh, uh, late spring, early summer, uh, the lotus began to have uh, young leaves. And here I'm going to show you the young leaves. The uh, youngest one surely it will be like only like this and out of the uh, water. But uh, sometimes we may see uh, two sides. One here and one here. And Oh, all the stem come from center of the whole thing. And this is uh, not open yet. Uh, usually we will add some darker color to suggest uh, uh, both sides covered. And here is the uh, dark green part. And uh, we will put a vents uh, just a little uh, later when this part is already dry or uh, semi-dry. And surely, if you use color, this will be a light green, and this part will be dark green. Then, when it keep growing, uh, we will see more of the center part. And I hope, I hope you understand why I'm doing this. All the strokes, by using dark color, suggesting the inside part of the leaf. And here we go, we have... So this is the bigger than this now, opens wider. And the stem from the center go this way, or this way. Now, this time I will show you the stem goes. And keep this in mind, we should not do the stem first because it's very difficult to add a uh, leaf, uh, later even flowers, very naturally belong to the stem. And uh, uh, the veins will be added here from the center 
out. And here, see, the vein goes this way, underneath, and coming out here. And uh, many times we avoid the, uh, the middle part, because this part will be a straight line. That straight line actually damages the uh, impression, or rather the feeling of the roundness. And you can see this part is very deep, and at this part, round and uh, folding, curved into this part. And uh, I believe this is the uh, way of making young leaves. It could be lower, could be higher, there are no definite rules. And, uh, and also could be facing right and could be facing uh, left. And uh, also another important thing is the alternation. I like to explain to you I made one with the uh, Y shape of van. The one next to it I made it uh, without opening. And uh, then this one is in the Y shape. And also some are long, some are short. It, it is a, a big no-no to make all the vans same kind of a curve and the same length. And you also see here, this part I show uh, Y shape. I omit this and leave most of the place open. And uh, the place open like this actually suggests the highlights. Uh, suggest that part uh, with more light reflected. Not going to say this part, there is no fan. And also, this is the time now to have some accent. And the stem usually got lots of uh, very fine throngs. It may not be so painful to hurt your fingers, but it, it not allow you to pick it and play with. And uh, this also a part of the Confucius idea, say it's beautiful flower, but standing far away from you. You're only uh, allowed to appreciate looking at, not to be a play with or touched. This is the lesson on young leaves. I'm going to show you a big leaf, a leaf not turned, uh, not uh, after the rain or storm, uh, a rounded one. I already mentioned our viewpoint is supposed uh, very low and uh, pretending we are smaller than those uh, plants. So mostly we are not going to show a top view of uh, a leaf. The leaf also I mentioned uh, almost like an umbrella. Now, the very basic way, very fundamental way, I charged my brush with a lot of green and I put a block at the tip. Now this is the first stroke. Then two, three, four, five. I finish a quarter of a leaf side view. Then it's important because this is the center of our leaf. So on the other side, we may have five movement and the suggesting it's uh, exactly uh, opposite to... Uh, then we're going to have uh, the uh, other half. The other half you see from outside in. I may only have a three strokes already complete. And then this is a big, big leaf showing this part 
very deep and we have a little bit other side. Now you know the the leaf is like a wash basin and this is the top, this is the edge and it goes down and here is the other side. Many of my students made the mistakes missing the point, the center part and have this been placed wrongly. Now after the draw green part finished then we are going to have the veins. The vein better go with the stroke and vice versa actually you have to start with your uh, stroke correctly to indicate the the leaves are kind of uh, I mentioned like a water basin. And this is the uh, large one, almost complete, no place broken, and no part really turned. But we could have a leaf uh, uh, slightly uh, showing more the other side, but the less the front. Watch, I'm uh, having five, and uh, you see I'm going to measure. I'm going to make the sure this is the center and uh, the other should be the same length. And uh, I'm moving in. And so this is the uh, another quarter. Then I mentioned about if we're going to see more the other side, surely the center could be much higher. The center will be here and now we're going to leave this place not attached momentarily. Uh, we surely can wash it later. I'm going to uh, wash this gently with a much lighter color. But very clearly you see the centers here and uh, we almost not to see uh, too much the uh, other side. I will put a stem first and later to put a veins. That means uh, this side being shown a little bit more than the one I just did. And from here I will uh, do this uh, once again. I leave uh, show you more the uh, other side. Surely this part being foreshortened and the less being seen because the foreshortening. And surely we know here's the center. And pay attention to the position of my brush handler. I use the side of my tip fully. It doesn't matter up or down. And we may just really leave this place not washed, or suggesting this part really bright, or suggesting this part really catches lots of dew drops or even last night's rain. And uh, I uh, will not show too much this side. From here, down here, the stem. And you can see now from 
here. Now here enters and come out again. And here enters, come out of again. Surely this is the, the same vein, only it drops, it comes out. The veins are very much the suggestion. And, uh, but if you put uh, your veins wrongly, that means not following the shape of the leaf, it may damage the uh, roundness or curving part of the uh, leaf. And uh, this is the first part of the big leaf. Now here's a sketch I uh, show to my class. Now this is the uh, very clearly showing the one I just finished. We see the center, and uh, this side very much foreshortened, and while the other side almost standing, uh, facing us. Now I'm going to show you one. I'll show a lot of the uh, underneath of the leaf but show very little of that. And it shows very much the contrast. And in most of the case, this would be higher than this kind of a leaf. Why? Because this you see more, meaning it's uh, underneath, uh, lower than our eye level, where this is the same height as our eye level. And uh, to make leaves like this, actually you have quite a lot of freedom. You can see I just uh, uh, randomly have a few uh, uh, spots here and there. And I jumped over and this dark green suggesting the other side. And a while here, this part, uh, surely we have to make sure we know where the the center is. Here's the center. So now we're going to have then this is the place where the stand coming from and now we see this is the underneath the wrong side. Then make sure all our veins either from the center out and also from outside towards uh, center. Then we have, and uh, the uh, veins being added to such a way, they all come to the center or from the center out. Then, Lastly, this is the way to suggest. Okay, so I just show you one very much the uh, facing us, showing lots of uh, like this sketch suggested, but uh, now we have one uh, showing half the way. Now we have uh, uh, another star we have to uh, discuss here. A side view, not very much, uh, mm, see, a side view, I suppose like this. Uh, this is the view where we see, and here's the center. Now, if we make this half uh, disappear, dropping, falling to the other side, meaning you do not see. Oh, you see, just a little bit. And here, we may think about here, this half coming in, folding, curving, and uh, this part. 
Now, we are not going to see this part anymore. And so we have a leaf like this. I'm sorry, I better put a veins here for you to understand. Oh, still, much of this right side being shown. And how about here? This will be the continuation of this, and there is a, a continuation of this vein, and then it curves this way, and it curves this way. And uh, I think uh, uh, better let me show you how to uh, do it. And uh, the important thing is that you first you understand uh, the uh, certain part being uh, falling. Now, this way I'm going to have the other side first. And what is this part? This you can consider already air. There's no flower. The completely falling, disappeared. We cannot see. But also we can put a, a line here suggesting this part leaves curved the ink. And how about here? Now remember, this is the center. Okay, then what's the meaning of this? Means this part before was here, but now it curved in. Okay, now we are having five parts, four parts on this side, one part on this side, curved the yin. So this is a leaf here with the center and going down. Okay, now Then this part, they use a lighter green for a lighter gray. This is the continuation of this one. And here. So this part is very deep, very dark, suggesting the light part of the other side of the uh, leaves curve the ink. And I have a sketch here uh, more clearly showing uh, with this part even curved in much more and while this part turned it was an opening here and with many on the other side uh, bending and curved. I'm going to show you two more different kind of uh, uh, positions or uh, type of leaves very commonly used by the masters and to make our composition more interesting. Actually, our great master, they just play with ink and uh, their brushes. For example, I'm going to demonstrate a sketch uh, like this here. Actually, the master uh, put the ink marks here and there very happily, randomly. Uh, randomly. And actually, it uh, sometimes uh, cover the, for the purpose of uh, covering the uh, ink marks. Now, I'm going to show you one of these. And uh, it's a very, uh, uh, free movement and uh, this surely will be uh, a part of the broken part and and what we're going to have we're going to have uh, this part 
suggesting uh, the other side curved in and this side curved in and also even this part cur curved in and here is the other side now and this is the way of making the one I just showed to you and uh, to put a little bit of veins, all the veins suppose facing or coming from the place. And surely uh, after this I may add a few uh, brownish color or yellowish color to suggest this is quite the old I may wash a little bit here. It's a much older leaf and dried up and this part curved in and this part out. And we may have uh, even much older leaves. Uh, but still in quite the right shape. Uh, for example, here I'm going to show you some sketches like this. And uh, this one on the side view and uh, uh, showing uh, quite a lot of the wrong side, the back side. And this even more and uh, suggesting uh, very much broken, this part already missing. Um, we see only a few places like that. Now I'm going to demonstrate this one first. Here we go, we have a little bit uh, here. And this is the, the front side. And uh, here we have to do the stem first because it's in front. Okay, now we are going to see from here down. Okay. And this is the very age. And now we are going to have quite a lot of uh, the other side being shown. So. Now this is also interesting, you see the way of showing the, uh, the burn, the broken part by having brown and with a little bit of black at the tip and we may uh -huh. surely this could be washed with a little bit of And you have to uh, remember, I show more the the other side, but uh, they deliver uh, the, the right side. This one old, broken but still standing straight here. I will show you a very much uh, dead one, very much falling and uh, not really uh, standing straight up. And the way uh, very commonly done by most of the masters to show the, uh, the late fall. And this is a very light color suggesting the, uh, the back side. It's uh, old and uh, broken. And uh, uh, very clearly this part will be the center where the stem coming.
all connecting. Okay, now we are going to show a few part of the that right side. Okay, then see this is the center goes down. Okay, now here is the veins. Uh, pay attention to this. Uh, the veins is only a suggestion. You have to move fast, almost like you, you are there and uh, touching, moving according to the shape of the leaf. You can see the dome here. So all my veins suggest their roundness. Even one or two places not very much uh, uh, rounded because my vein uh, suggested that part is really curved. Now, uh, surely some artists may make this even very dry and uh, closed it up. Uh, for the composition's sake, we may have that kind of uh, leaves. And this is uh, uh, about uh, our leaves. And after that, we will show you the flowers. We are going to show you some flowers before I demonstrate. On screen you see a very much older flower and they are fading away, I mean those petals. And at the center part you see the seed, the seed pot. There are surely still lots of stamen there, but you can see now uh, the petals uh, open and uh, dropping. This will be the, uh, a part of my demonstration, but i like to show you this first. This is a full-grown lotus flower, side view. Uh, against the very dark green leaves, you can see the beauty of the uh, flower. Lotus flower could be pure white, greenish white, or a, a little bit yellowish white, but also uh, commonly we see pinkish. There are also some uh, very dark red, but uh, we see very often the pink one like this. Uh, outside of the petal, very much darker in color, where the inside part is very pale, sometimes almost white. And uh, if the flower is very, very young, then we will see it looks like this. Uh, we show three petals, and this is going to grow and uh, falling down, and it slowly, gradually become bigger and bigger. And this is uh, what we're going to do. But first, uh, I'm going to show you the outline one. This is the outline flowers. And uh, later, I will show you the uh, free stroke. And uh, we will use the opportunity to review what we have done about uh, uh, leaves. You see, this is the leaf with the uh, other side uh, bending and uh, curving. And this is a very old one, I just demonstrated. But that one's falling down, this one still stand facing up. And surely, here's the young ones.
on screen, I'm going to show you three stages of a full-grown, a big lotus flower. Uh, up here actually is a side view, but with uh, lots of petals showing. The one next to it is slightly lower than our eye level. You see the center part more, lots of stamens here. And also we see more the inside part of petal. And the last one here showing the seed pot. And wide or open here. So this is a much bigger cup or even a ball. And where this one is a smaller cup, or this one, you are not going to see too much the center part because I just mentioned is the eye level. Okay, now I'm going to show you the outline once. The, this one first. And uh, you remember I mentioned in the other tape about a special term called the go le uh, for the peonies. Now, I'm going to show you the go le uh, technique. We are going to have a pause and a move. This is the petrol behind it, and where uh, we could have another petrol. And we may stop here, showing a very young flower. Okay, now. So, we see so many petrols, uh, lots of them behind it. If we're going to show one bigger, here, and this is a, a big one, and also it's it's growing now, uh, become, and oh, this is the one uh, I just show you the first step, and uh, most of the uh, uh, painters, I mean scholars, when they paint the lotus they concentrate to this type of the flower. Side view, uh, grown big already, but not fading, uh, not too young. And uh, surely the, uh, the stem could be outlined. And here is the top of the very small narrow cup. And here we go. And And by the way, since these are very close together, you do not see any statement. Uh, I will show you uh, a young one. The young one is very much just one of this. Uh, then, a younger one. Then we show it could have another young ones. Without any second uh, petals. Take a good look again. Then after this, I'm going to show you a uh, flower a little bit lower than our eye level. Now I'm going to show you the flower, the second one, here. Uh, what the difference? Uh, look at the first petal. The first petal here is standing, as I say, it's facing us, it's the eye level. But this one's lower than our eye level, so it become a foreshortened. It's a dropping coming towards us. So the first petal should be like this. Huh? And the second one also more or less foreshortened. And so the other side 
we, we can see more. Uh, I may stop here, just as uh, not full grown yet. Uh, this petal is uh, behind it, and here we may have another one coming down. But the most important thing is don't forget where it will be the center. And uh, not too much the seed pot going to be seen. So, we're going to show more the stamen. The stamen could be in golden yellow and could be brown and could be just yellow. And uh, this is the uh, second one. I'm going to show you the third one here, showing the C part. And many times we have to do uh, the C part uh, first. This is the tip of the, the uh, actually the seeds. And if we're going to have one petal in front of it, this one supposed a uh, very much for shortened. This is the old flower. We may show some falling down. And on this side, we may have. Now, don't forget that this is the center. This is the top of the pot, C pot. And here we go. And uh, there's one thing important is we never make the both sides equally the same. No form of balancing but the following steer, the triangle, meaning a certain part should be higher, certain part should be lower. I uh, like to once again showing the uh, petals being uh, for short. I, because this petal before, it is uh, some kind of like this. But because we are looking down from here, uh, our view, so it become like this. And automatically suggest this part it opens. Uh, I will uh, draw. So I, th you can see now it's a rice ball. Well, with uh, the part open and the center is someplace here. This is the outline uh, flower. I just uh, made one uh, at this corner, just to test uh, to see uh, my color is okay, my brush is all right now. Uh, this is a full-grown side view splashing ink technique. Now I'm going to show you the way. Uh, notice my brush handle very low, and uh, the tip of my brush carried much darker color. 
and you can see this part only water, this part is light pink and very stronger pink. And for the other side of this petal, I'm going to do it the other way. Now watch carefully my hander, of the brush hander, come to the left side. And this is the way to complete the petal here. And because the blanket in darker color, so it looks uh, much deeper uh, later when it dries, I will show you once again. And here, we could just find one stroke, not to show the center part, but this part we show uh, the center part always lighter color. And uh, this one showing more the side view. And especially this one is a very interesting technique. Uh, I move upward, suggesting this is like a spoon. This is the tip and the bending, curving, up going. And for uh, younger one, actually it's just the front pattern. And uh, we may have uh, uh, I stop here. Uh, I'm going to have another darker one coming in here. I uh, may use uh, uh, the same technique, but uh, starting with the young ones the uh, other way, meaning I was started here, the younger one. And then uh, still the same. And the most of the artists just have one straw. And uh, after uh, just a few seconds, you can see this is much lighter. The center part become. Okay, this is the uh, side view. And uh, next to this, I will show you the C part. I'm going to show you this number three flowers. A wide, wide open and showing the C part. And the first thing I have to, once again, to uh, emphasize the foreshortening of this petal. And also, I will show the big open uh, openings here at the top, because we are looking down into uh, flowers. But you will say, how about uh, the flower facing left and right, not upgoing? It, it is uh, very simple. You, you can see now this flower is facing left and uh, this one was facing uh, right. Now, uh, let me show you still uh, vertically standing. And one and two. And this is a very much foreshortened uh, Petal, and here we're going to have one here, and and at the big opening here, definitely it's for the C part. Then this the C part here is still very much the side view uh, because this arrangement, I mean the petal arrangement, still not very much like this one yet. Uh, this is really very low, uh, much lower than our eye level. And here we're going to have some uh, dots indicating the uh, upper part of the, the seat. And uh, most of the case, because uh, uh, the seeds already become big, so we have uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, irregular edges. And then I'm going to show you the, the uh, stamen. 
Uh, either way, I went inside, put a, the brown dots first, and then later I add a, a yellow stamen. And uh, this is the first the cup in the middle I finished. Then I'm going to continue to give uh, more petals for uh, this one. Surely I will add one here, and I will add one someplace uh, here. And I may give uh, one completely uh, old and a face fading, dropping, and I may have another one here. Okay, then I believe I finished this flower, and uh, from the top, the, the top of the ball, in the middle, I'm going to move my brush such a way from this part down, 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 and uh, this is the, uh, or the stem I'm going to make. And after that, show a few small dots to indicate this is not a, like a bamboo, but with uh, lots of thorns, lots of things coming out. Uh, I believe uh, this is the uh, fresh splashing ink star uh, of a big flower. Now I'm mixing white for my uh, flowers. Uh, mix white with pink. The white must be very much uh, creamy, but not very sticky, not very dry, but also supposed not watery. You have to have patience to find the very good quality of the uh, white. Sometimes the watercolor white uh, is too much uh, transparent and uh, maybe the commercial artists the poster call white a uh, poster white will be okay but still depends how fine the quality is now I charge my brush with that much of uh, white I keep mixing and mixing uh, make sure the white all over my brush then I'm going to dip into this part. I will take pink, or rather red, on my tip of the brush. Now, you can see my hand is very, very low, and the movement like this. And this is for the left side. I take, again, this is the other side. And when I finish this, I may move my brush once again with white to soften this part. Then, oh, many artists like to have uh, uh, this technique uh, because uh, the color much easier to control. Oh, I may even stop here. And this is the way. And if we're going to have uh, more white for the center part, we may do so by adding white here. But uh, one thing you have to remember is this, the stroke. You are not going to just fill in uh, with a rubbing, uh, with a, a careful uh, fill up. The movement of the white for the center part, I still use the technique called a, a calligrapher's stroke. The airplane lands and I twist my tip brush and I move up and I move down. Uh, uh, when, when the white dries, it sears this part of uh, uh, rice paper. Then we can have uh, the uh, wash. The wash from the back will keep the white remaining as it is this moment. Uh, okay, um, I may show you once again 
the, uh, the young ones. I have white on my brush. Then, then, it's the young one. On the old one, surely. It's understandable you're going to do the same. Only the composition, the arrangement. outline flower I made just a little while ago. I'm going to fill in each petal, each section, each part with my white. The white surely also showing some place very strong, some place very gentle, very light. For example here, my brush was water here and a very thin white and a very sticky solid white, a faded tip. It's hard to see, but you can see a little bit. This part is the water. Then I will do it again with my brush this way. The center part actually less white there. Now for this one, I will add uh, more white here and surely here, less white. And again, it is similar to that first one. Uh, but I pick up my brush because there is a line showing a small pattern in front. And the same thing, I have to stop here for each petal. Uh, I already did this for the uh, young ones. And here we go. It's exactly the same like what I did for one here. And this part, the grayish, is the transparent part. That means uh, water. Then the second stroke, I have my hander on this side. And I will have this one. Now, remember I said each movement to apply the white following the calligrapher's stroke. The airplane lands, the airplane takes off. And here the same. Only sometimes I move from center out, sometimes I move from top down. This surely needs some practice. Um, one stroke fearing this much of the petal, then I shift my this way, and here, and this part were not covered by my white. Now you can see uh, this is the flower outline, but the fearing was white. When the white completely dried, then I can wash the background. The white petal will stand out very, very uh, sharply or clearly. And here we go. Uh, you notice that I make this part first. I make this part first, this part first, because this is a stronger white. And when inside this place, my white already halfway gone. So this part almost no white and the white concentrate to this very age because I move my brush this way. This need a little more practice. Uh, your brush long and soft. You have to understand how to wave the hand in such a way to get that kind of uh, smoothness and uh, gracefulness. This is the uh, pinkish flower with already white on it. Now I'm going to uh, demonstrate how to paint a, a sheep. Sheep. Uh, surely when it's young, always uh, greenish. 
when it's old, become a brownish and even grayish brown and even very pale light brown. And uh, the way of this school is very simple by having and this almost you do not see the other side but if you like to show the other side and surely it could be done uh, like uh, here then this is the top then I will show the side So this is a smaller. Then we see the top of the seat. And this one we may add a few lines and also show some statement. Not disappear yet. And uh, this one, I uh, may still have one or two. I will use this opportunity to finish this painting. Have two seed pots, seed pots and two flowers. And I'm going to add uh, uh, leaves. If I put the leaves first, that means I'm going to have a leaf in front on to cover the stems. Now if I make stems first, now I will have lived a difficult problem, meaning my leaf must give the way to stop some place when the stems are passing. So the wise thing to do is to have flowers, then anything like a, this a seed pot then have leaves. Then this is the top side, the other side. Then I'm going to show you, this is very clearly will be the center of the leaf. Okay, then here we are going to have the uh, other side complete. Here. And here is very much for shortened. And uh, I, I do need uh, another leaf someplace. Okay, for example, if I have a few uh, drops of ink here and there, I will connect them and I have them become a part of my uh, a part of my a part of my uh, leaf. And then you see here. And uh, for the other side, we may use a uh, uh, little bit of wash type of thing, uh, like this. Many artists are doing that for actually for himself to see where the uh, other side would be. And surely this part we have to also color it. Uh, this is the inside part. Okay, now. Or are going to uh, have uh, the veins. Surely this is the center. And okay, now I'm going to have stamps. The hardest part is a very long one for the young flower or the 
uh, C pot very high. Uh, now, the young ones appear. Then we have to have a very steady hand and hold the handle of your brush upright and firmly you have a pause then move down and when you meet some you pick up your brush and jump over and continue here we go pause stop and continue here and it goes down and this is the one Now you see, I just made a stem for these young ones. I going to put a, another one for this flower. And uh, you remember I explained this is the upper part of the cup, and it goes down. This is the center of the lower part of the cup. And from here I go down and down. And they, they all will go to the. Uh, roads. And uh, for this one, I will go this way down. Okay. And uh, for this one, pause, pause, go, and go pause. And here we will have another one showing Okay, now you see they are all connected. We uh, need a few dots to suggest Okay, now to finish a painting, uh, not only uh, we have to put a uh, veins for for this part, and there are also something interesting I should uh, introduce to you: how to show the ages of the uh, leaves being burned, and actually that is a technique to cover mistakes like this. This part is a little bit too light. Uh, when it dries, may become uh, nothing there. So there is a certain technique. I pick up brown and leave with the block at my tip. Now watch. This is the way to create the edge of the old leaves being burned or with holes eaten by the insects. Now my brush hold almost horizontally. Then, there's a hole being created by me. And I may continue to have another part. This part covered by brown and black. And how about here? Yeah, I can continue to show there is another hole. Another hole here. And here we may add also brown or even just a block to show. It's almost uh, like uh, retouching, but I correct the mistakes and I make people see more of uh, the oldness. For example, here I could create the oldness by showing this part is brown and with holes. And uh, I will complete uh, the whole thing by adding some water weeds and also by add one uh, dragonfly. 
uh, surely, hopefully, when they quite completely dry, I'm going to wash this one. Now, uh, I'm going to show you how to correct the mistakes. I splashed ink here and there, and then that definitely we're going to have so called the water weeds to. Uh, the water weeds usually brownish or sometimes uh, greenish. You see, I have uh, yellow on my brush and I take a little bit brown. And uh, now my purpose is to uh, cover the, the ink marks here, but also make my painting more interesting. finish this part. I may continue to uh, have some more water weeds. Yeah. And here we will have a few weeds. Okay, then I will add uh, something here. Uh, a much taller water weeds must be added, especially uh, these two are too much uh, side by side, parallel to each other. So from lower part up, I will uh, showing the uh, lotus pond with a lot of uh, uh, weeds. And uh, surely the lower part um, from the water. And there are two small spots, I mean ink spot, that I create this kind of uh, composition. And uh, most of the case, we will add uh, some uh, uh, interesting thing like a bird. But this painting is already very full. Uh, the composition is already very rich. Uh, I may add one uh, interesting thing, uh, a dragonfly. The dragonfly came this way, entering the painting. Here we go. This is the procedure. I make two, two circles. The big eye. And uh, I believe I need uh, something going this way. So the tear of the dragonfly will go up. I'll make this uh, as a continuation of the movement towards this direction. Then I add the yellow to fill in the open spaces. Then after that, I will use light, very light gray, almost no color, very, very light gray for the wing. I'm going to have the first wing and second. It's not uh, finished yet. The uh, dragonfly, most of the case, will have uh, a blocked spot here. And after that, I will dry my brush, have very little black ink. The 
little black ink to suggest what? To suggest the, the feet. And also sometimes I will show the lines on the wing. And I finish this, then I'm going to write some here. I will write something here to say this is the lotus pond. And telling people the year. And my name. And the place where I did this. And uh, the writing also uh, helped the composition uh, very much. I will uh, stop here and uh, later I'm going to wash the whole thing and after that I will put my name chop here. This is the one I made uh, just a while ago, showing an uh, almost completely dead uh, hanging uh, broken leaf. I'm going to show also a uh, sepa, old and uh, dry. Um, here. And uh, It's old, and so it goes down here. And uh, may have some stamen, but also the stamen will be also brown, even black and the gray. And yeah. here. And then after this, I may also add some uh, very, very dry uh, water weeds down here. Okay. Uh, it's only suggesting uh, down here is the water. Uh, surely I may have something very long, and uh, the branch is a very, very long, but only carry one or two leaves. Surely the leaves are very similar to bamboo, very similar to bamboo. And uh, I will just stop here. This actually is a complete painting showing the very sad uh, almost early winter the uh, lotus pond with only dry dying uh, things we're not going to do uh, some kind of uh, idea of showing where the water is like a wash or like a ripples and or waves. Uh, most of the case, we just put a goldfish someplace down below and it's suggesting this is the water. And surely this is the uh, oriental perspective. We're not thinking about photographically, uh, means how, how can you, you see the uh, goldfish in the water. So this is the interesting idea. Now I'm going to show you two fish swimming here.
after that, surely I may add some action. Then the second fish coming down from here. I have to in indicate a uh, uh, little bit of the Then another one will be here swimming down. The other two may not see very much, and uh, this is the and uh, this is suggesting water down here and under the leaves. Or surely some artists may uh, use a very light green uh, wash such a way and uh, suggesting, but sometimes uh, not necessary. And uh, sometimes we may put a, something here, like a, a, a dropping flower, suggesting the two fishes uh, catching that. They thought something edible. I'm going to wash this painting. First, I'm going to spray with a sprayer to spray water all over. Now you have to use Chinese ink, but Chinese ink is permanent. When it dries, it becomes permanently on rice paper, will not be washed away. If you're going to uh, try this technique, please remember rice paper and a Chinese ink are required. If you use watercolor or any other kind of color, it will not work. To spray water could be the front, also could be the back. Now I'm going to flip it. This is the wrong side. And uh, interestingly, you will see why I put white for the flower. Now you see the water being sprayed. You have to wet the paper thoroughly, completely, but not too wet. But you will say, suppose it already happened, it is already too much water there. Then we have to use another piece of paper to block the, to take away the excess water. Uh, you better, you see, turn your head to see the places like this, just like this, or reflecting the uh, light, meaning that place we got uh, too much the uh, water there. Then I'm using a piece of paper just to dry the whole thing. Now, the shiny part disappeared. Now, if certain place remain, for example, like here, remain white, uh, not transparent, it means uh, that place is still dry, not enough water. Because my blanket is in dark color, you can see the light lost. The white pattern stands out, out so dramatically. And if the painting quite old, meaning 
you painted uh, two or three days ago, and you have a, a little bit of problem because the ink, especially yellow and blue, when they dry, they really completely sear the paper and make that part of the paper water uh, we resist it. So in that case, we have to spray water on both sides and uh, have to wait for a while until the painting become thoroughly wet, thoroughly wet, become soft, and all the wrinkles gone. Now, there are also some important thing is this. You need a bigger container to mix the color you want more than you need it. You will say, how can we know? And then try several times. You know how much uh, water for a painting this size. And by the way, if you mix too much, it will be all right. Let it just sit in your container, because next day or in the afternoon, you may use it again. Another thing is this, or why you have to have enough uh, color being prepared, because it's very difficult to uh, mix once again to have the same shade, same hue, and the same intensity. The second thing important is you need a brush like this. It saves lots of time. We're not show the small uh, strokes, uh, I mean the marks of the strokes. And uh, you have to start from uh, the outside part and then move all the way. And since this is a water plant, and you have to move your brush from left to right. And you see here, actually I will be very careful not to add too much uh, the blue, the wash color to the flower. But also it will be okay if you apply the uh, white on such a such a way, meaning certain part strong, certain part light, according to a, a flower supposed to be, there will be no trouble at all. Because the place with uh, more white remain white. The place will have less white, that means that place may have a little penetration, may have a little bit the wash color comes through. Because the paper wet, so uh, the ink sprays automatically by itself. And sometimes you may move another direction to soften the color and also remove the wrinkle. Now you notice that I didn't uh, with the brush stroke all over covering the uh, whole flower, but I covered this part. Uh, colors penetrates a little bit, but it's okay because certain part be my white, certain part uh, showing a little bit color from my brush. And I will show you some already dried because this will take so around a half hour or even one hour to dry. This is the painting I just washed. By putting a piece of white paper on top, then I roll it up and flip the other way. This is the right side. Although it's not dried yet, but I like you to see 
the result of the wash. You see the white stands out, the grayish green or rather grayish uh, blue green as the background suggests the water. Then I will show you more about the already complete uh, paintings without a wash. And then lastly, I will show you my scroll, which was already washed and pasted, mounted. I'm going to show you an album I made for my dear students to follow. These are all the models showing lots of things. For example, these two pages showing the leaves falling and with their broken mark and add brown here and you see the stroke moving towards the center and uh, the strokes here, the light green, then the dark green there and also uh, dragonfly. And uh, surely it goes with the kingfisher. This is the flying kingfisher with a very long beak and a blue and a blue here. This is a flying one. And also I have a, a very much enlarged one. And this is a quite fairly stick showing the blue here and the long beak, big eyes and also the reddish front. And this album is very interesting because every page can be just half and a half. Also could be uh, all the way. This is another one showing a young leaf. And uh, the, this leaf, this part broken, but this folding, curving, uh, curved into it. And uh, this one is a, a very old uh, broken one falling down. And there's another here showing the young ones here and uh, the, uh, this is another technique. Uh, but I show a little bit uh, to you uh, before by having color coming down, 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 down and up, up, up. And after the yellowish green almost dry, then add the brown with a little block to suggest the age has been burned very dry and very old. And uh, this is uh, uh, a rock in front of the all the um, leaves. Uh, surely many times we may have some ducks to suggest this is water and with a uh, uh, lotus uh, above. Another uh, kind of birds I have to mention are uh, the mandarin ducks. The mandarin ducks are suggesting happy marriage. At the same time, the lotus, because the pronunciation is a lian, which means togetherness, and in most case we're going to make paintings like this to uh, be used as a wedding gift to wish people uh, marry happily always uh, together until uh, the end of everything. So in many cases they were put uh, uh, all the good words on it. And uh, I will show you the enlargement of the uh, Mandarin duck. And if the Mandarin duck painted like this, this must belong to a very huge painting because this two birds actually life size. Then in this case, you have to make leaves and flowers uh, life size. And uh, here is a, a, a sketch like thing to show a huge uh, mural painting. Uh, you can see here and uh, with uh, lots of, and also a leaf fading away, uh, lost in the fog. And surely this is the oven. I uh, did a lot of uh, other uh, models here. This is the Virginia uh, Magnolia. 
the Mag Magnolia arrangement or the, the very close to our lotus flowers. Let me turn back to see uh, once again the Mandarin duck. The way of making it actually the same. I made a beak first, then the eye, then here, then a curve here, then continue this part, and here, and here. And this is a very much realistic. The birds got a very dark feather here, and a very white here. And this is the mare, and a female usually is lipped uh, uh, brownish, uh, grayish color. It's a symbol of a happy marriage. Once again, I will show you the screws I made recently with a kingfisher looking down and a young bug next to it. And let's uh, review and to see the way I made the leaves. This is the center of the leaf showing uh, the majority of the front, but with two parts curving. And a very old one here. And uh, uh, look at that outline flowers. The outline flowers showing lots of statement but not showing the sea. And here is the young ones. And lotus is a very commonly uh, used for wading I just mentioned. And uh, nowadays so many scholars from the Shanghai school, Wu school to Lingnan school it become a very much important subject matter for this group of artists. And uh, I believe this will be the end of our lessons. And I take a good look of the flowers. Actually, this flower painted after I finish the leaves. And with white. And after the white dry, then I wash the background. It's the procedure I just showed you. And there are so many different kinds of uh, kingfisher. Some are big, some are small. And this is the one I enjoy very much with a long beak and reddish. And also look carefully. I add a few very uh, fine, but also very light grayish green to indicate the, the veins for each petal. 